Hey everyone and welcome back to another uh, tutorial. I am Hijack and I'll be your host through this tutorial. Um, today I'm going to present you with some uh, techniques and some uh, tricks to uh, present your uh, visuals in a more dynamic and clean way. Um, we will be using free software that you can find online and download it immediately while you watch this um, tutorial. Um, I will add the, the software that we will be using to um, a, a download, downloadable package underneath the description. Um, please feel free to leave any comments and to add any suggestions you may think may be needed in the future for tutorials like this. So let's get started. First off, we're going to open any uh, software you might want to uh, use to do visuals with. Let's see, we're going to uh, <clears throat> open Corel. As you can see, there is a set of menus in Corel already present. I'm going to open a piece I've been working on. And as you can see, it is a very wide piece. It is not a regular size piece for a screen or for a uh, projection or for any kind of work. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the free software that I mentioned to capture this and present it in a clean fashion without any menus and with a certain selection of an area to um, keep the audience engaged only in a certain area that we want them to uh, watch or to uh, pay attention to. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and open uh, Cam Twist. So first off, let's talk about Cam Twist. <clears throat> Cam Twist is, uh, let's say, it's presented as a, a small television studio. The best approach to a television studio that you can get in software, according to the creators of Camtoast. Um, it is very simple to use, and as I mentioned earlier, it is absolutely free. I will include a download link with a zip file and more information that might that you might find useful. Uh, let's see. So we're going to start off by going up to to our preferences and. We're going to change a few of these preferences so that we can get a better result with our uh, footage, with our uh, projections, with our event, you know, with our capture. So, I'm going to go into the Generals tab and I'm going to set the frame rate to 24. 24 is the frame rate used in uh, most productions in uh, Hollywood. Uh, usually it is 24 frames, 25 frames, 29.97 frames, 23.976 frames, um, 967 frames. Well, a bunch of those. Uh, the minimum that you should use to keep the audience engaged and motivated in your motion and your motion accurate is 15 or 12. 12 or 15 are pretty much the uh, lowest frame rate where the human mind actually begins to believe that there isn't solid images but actually a moving animated motion, live motion in front of them. No longer a static image. Uh, so keep that in mind. I'm going to put this back to 24. And over here in video size, I want you to go ahead and put whatever you like and whatever you think is best for your uh, <coughs> output. I have it 1280 by 720. That is uh, HD, the lowest HD that I would use. It is not the lowest HD resolution, but it is the lowest HD resolution that I would use uh, to present my artwork. Um, if I did not have HD resolution, available, I would have to use a standard definition resolution I would use the uh, highest one I could use. Uh, you know, trying to push the most out of this uh, system that I got. Okay, um, let's see more about video devices. It also gives you the ability to capture your camera if you want to put yourself on screen or you want to put uh, whoever you're working with on screen or the DJ on screen or I don't know, a few ideas. You know, you can change the resolution there as well. Okay, going back to uh, <coughs> our starting point, 
change all this that you need and then we can go back and get out of preferences you might have to restart after changing your preferences but we're gonna move on right now so cam twist is what you see right now this one single window I'm gonna teach you how to deliver your artwork the way you intend it to so first off there are three steps you have to take to present material in cam twist step one you have to select which source you wanted to present. We're going to start off by choosing Desktop Plus. Step two, you have to select some effects. You don't really have to select any effects to start off with, but it is uh, recommended to play with the effects to get yourself familiarized with them. There's a lot of stuff that you can do, and it does not kill to have fun with it. Okay, step three, adjust the settings. As you can see here, it says effects in use, and you can select which effects you want to choose. Right now, earlier we selected Desktop Plus, and right now it's over here in the effects in use. So, as soon as I selected it, as you can see in the settings panel, all this certain number of settings have appeared. First option you can see is you can select from between this screen or any other screen that you might have connected to this computer. Right now I have no other screen selected so I have to go with this screen or main screen. Then you can select whether you want to capture the full screen or you want to confine it to an application window. Once you know what you want to capture you can also filter out any unwanted windows. That might be any window that might be floating over whatever it is you're trying to capture. Let's say you're trying to capture Corel right here. And it turns out that you might put a window in the way as you're working with it. Well, this option will try to make sure that any window that you can have floating above your artwork will not actually appear as part of your artwork and will not appear in your final image and will not appear in your final projection. Let's see, moving along. The next option is we can choose which application we want to capture. Let's see, we're going to choose Coral Painter 12. Hit refresh. It's gonna, we're going to choose which section of Coral Painter we want to capture. So first off, we're going to uh, go into Coral and see how much we want Coral to actually take up. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And then I'm going to uh, widen the canvas to as much as I want to capture well, my work area, you know, until I'm pretty much comfortable with what I'm working with. All right. All right. And then I'm going to go back into Cam Twist. And go, then go ahead and click on Select Capture Area. As you can see, Cam Twist has already tried to make a bounding box. It has made a bounding box on the older um, area that it was trying to capture. But I'm going to go ahead and resize it into the new area and I'm going to try to uh, cut out the scroll bars. Not really worried about making this perfect. I just want to. You know, make a little bit of bleed so that it's nice and safe from uh, showing any part that I don't want to show to the public. Let's see. So I'm gonna go ahead. I've got my bounding box finished. Go ahead and go back into Cam Twist. Go ahead and click on Done Select. Okay. Now I don't really want my mouse to show up as I'm doing any artwork in here, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and. Just leave it as it is. Now this should be working right now. Right now, with this as it is, we should already have some sort of an image going through between Corel and Canvas. So I'm going to go up to Canvas uh, Tools. I'm going to hit on. I'm going to go ahead and click on Preview. And as you can see, there is my artwork. Corel. And this, I can full screen it onto any screen. There, voila, you have a full screen image of your artwork. I'm going to go ahead and escape right now. 
Now, if you have a separate screen connected to your computer, you can actually full screen this on that separate screen and you will be able to paint and draw without any menus flooding your uh, projection. It kind of solves the issue of mirroring the screen, it kind of solves the issue of placing the image on a canvas and placing the image so that it fits your projection. Um, as you can see, I am right now moving the canvas uh, window over my uh, Corel piece and is not invading the uh, Corel piece at all. It is not showing up in the preview and I could continue painting or adding effects to my um, art piece without actually being worried of any sort of menu invasion. So let's see. Let's say that you, um, let's say you're working on some artwork in Corel and uh, you have to leave your post for a second to answer a phone call or to uh, answer a text message or whatever. Uh, so you have to leave something kind of like an autopilot, but you can't really leave anything in autopilot inside Corel or in Photoshop or in whatever. So you need to run. You need a solution. So um, you go ahead and you grab the uh, kaleidoscope. Let's see, and uh, you click on add. You say, and you just you, you begin to see what ha what's happening over here in the preview window, right? Uh, you just go ahead and you add as many reflections as you need, and you uh, set the speed, and then you walk off, right? Well, there you go. And then once you're done, you come back, and you uh, slowly take it off, and you're done. And you're back to painting. Simple as that. That is the end of the first half of this tutorial and the end of the basics of how to uh, get this material through. Uh, what I'm going to show you next is how to use the more advanced settings in Canvas. If you'd like to see the next half, please feel free to click on the link on the description. Hasta chao!